All right, then, uh, without uh, further ado, uh, I guess I'm going to talk in a second. Uh, so I'm, I am currently at Facebook. Uh, the work I'm going to be talking about today uh, is the work I was doing right before joining Facebook. So I've only been there about six months. Um, so this was some stuff I was doing, thinking about back at USC ISI. And so we're <coughs> taking a slightly different tack than, than the previous talk. So setting the context for what I'm going to talk about here is um, I've been doing a lot of uh, thinking about networks for a long time, and uh, more and more I got involved in networks that actually had a temporal aspect to them. And some of the work I was working on was really trying to understand the communities and how communities evolve over time and how the nodes uh, in those communities might change over time. In particular, I was interested <laughs> in trying to predict whether a node is likely to leave a community, is it becoming a more of a peripheral node, is it likely to join another community. And I looked at a lot of the literature, and I was not too happy about some of the formalisms that I had. In particularly, they seem to come up with these snapshots of graphs, and they come up with ad hoc methods on, well, how do we create what the snapshot is and what the edges were. Um, and I wasn't too happy about why, because they didn't really seem to really justify some of those uh, some of those parameters, and I wanted to understand them a little bit more. And so the work that came out of this is what I'll be talking about today, is think a little bit about, well, how you actually take this uh, the input and create these networks such that you can create, such that you can find communities and track them over time. Those parameters going into how the network looks at any given time is going to be very important. And so the work here is much more data-driven, it's much more empirical in terms of let's actually try these very these parameters and see what actually happens in, what, uh, in the results you may find. And um, to, to, give, to give you a sense, uh, and this comes back to, to both what, the, uh, what Patrick was talking a little bit earlier today when he introduced this poll session, the, 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 the way I'm looking at the world is that yes, you have this, uh, uh, over time you see a lot of uh, nodes in, in your world and they may interact in, in, in various ways. And so, for example, you might uh, at, at various time slots see these various interactions between nodes that may be directed, they may not be directed. They may be these kind of permanent things. If I link to a page, there's going to be this permanent record of a link between the pages. Or there may be an email that's a kind of an instantaneous thing. It may be a friendship like what you have in, 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 uh, in, the, uh, in Facebook or, or friend follower in the Twitter graph that are a little bit more persistent. But even there, you still have people interacting and say you, they send messages back and forth, they retweet to each other and so on and so forth. So how do you deal with this whole mass of different things? Uh, and I wanted to try to get us a little bit sense, a better sense of how to deal with it. So in this particular case, for example, the question is, at, uh, if you do observe all these interactions uh, uh, over time and you're at time step five and you want to say, well, I want to say something about what's going on at time five. What are the communities? What, what are the nodes like? Who's the most central person? Um, the question is, well, what, what should the graph really look like at that point? And so various people have looked at various aspects of doing it. The first one may be, well, let's just take a look at, uh, uh, at that particular time step and we can say it's going to be within the last day or the last week. It doesn't really matter. But yes, no, right now, uh, right? So it doesn't really matter, but a lot of people say, well, let's just look at the graph as it looks right now within, within this epsilon of t. And so this, this is the graph I'm going to look at and see what's going on here. And I'm going to justify whatever I, I find based on, based on this. Another one is, as Patrick pointed out, there's also this more time on a thing of like a sliding window, if you will. So let's look at the last couple of time steps, and we're just going to slide it forward and say, well, what happened over the last uh, couple of weeks or days or what have you? And you're just basically going to aggregate everything you saw in that particular window, and that's going to be your current state of the world. And so, okay, so now you have that parameter as well. What should that window be? Uh, very often, a lot of people have basically said, no, let's just take a look at, go back to, 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 to whenever we started collecting data and say, this is all the data we've ever seen. This is now the graph. It basically is an aggregate of everything we've seen so far. And this is, uh, this is the state of the world, so we're going to uh, uh, we are going to work with that, and we're going to treat things that happen back at time step one exactly the same as what is happening at time step five. And sometimes that might be justifiable, sometimes maybe not. And so the question is not, is one, is one answer the right or the wrong answer? I think it really says it depends on what the question is. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll talk to that uh, uh, throughout the talk as well. The final thing you might also think about is, well, let's do then some time decay and say, well, the things that happen right now are much more important than things that happened uh, 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 back uh, back in the day, and so now you have some kind of time decay, and you're going to uh, deal with the things here. You're going to weight them much higher than things that happened in, in, in the past, but you're not going to completely forget about them because they might still be informative uh, for for whatever question you might have. And so now these are just some of the things you might be able to do. 
the question, of course, is, well, what should you be doing and, uh, and why, right? There you go. Right, so the thing is that I've seen all of these types of aggregations in the literature, and everybody does whatever they do, and they don't necessarily put it in context with other types of uh, uh, aggregations and, and, and justify, well, why is, why is this the right one? And so in particular, there's kind of a question, then, well, the results you have, uh, yeah, they consistent across the different types of aggregations. Did you actually use the right aggregation? Particularly if you don't find the answer you, don't, uh, you were looking for, and you say, well, this just doesn't work. And maybe it doesn't happen to, to many of us here, because presumably we, we, we are uh, scientists enough that we want to delve into the question. But if you talk about practitioners or people new to the field, they just say, well, we tried this thing. It just didn't work. We don't know why, so we'll move on to something else. Right? And so I think it's important. Uh, and upon us as well to, to say when we actually do any kind of temporal aggregation to justify it a little as to, well, these were the options, but this is what we chose for whatever reason. I think that's uh, going to be important. Right, in, pa in particularly because it has such a dramatic effect on any downstream analytics. So the question I wanted to talk about here is really how does this aggregation then affect whatever analytics uh, you have, uh, have downstream? And, uh, Particular for the questions that that I that was kind of driving this is that at any given time, what would the network look like? Uh, and I'm going to justify why I wanted to look at that later on, right? The question is really, well, how do the communities then? What do they look like at any given time? What do they look at uh, at a following time? How do they evolve? And how can we track them? Uh, things, uh, how do they know change uh, within a within a network? Are they becoming more or less central? Are they likely to leave a particular community? Um, and also on all sorts of other types of uh, impacts, and I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, some machine learning experiments uh, at the end and say, well, depending on how you aggregate, it's also going to have an impact there, uh, clearly. So stepping back is first, the first question is, well, how do we then generate a network for a particular time t? And so um, as I mentioned already, there's the question of uh, what is the current network? Uh, and so at any given time t, it's, uh, if you can think about email, for example, at any given time t plus minus epsilon, Chances are you're only going to see maybe one message or, or, or a, a couple of emails. Uh, uh, if you go up into the global world, clearly, uh, if epsilon is small enough, chances are you're only going to see a small message even on things on, on Facebook scale, right? So uh, one of the things that you might want to, 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 to say is that, well, let's first come up with a, a time window which say this is really my time frame. It's going to be one day, it's going to be a minute, it's going to be five minutes, depending on what you want to do. So that's one parameter you might want to think about with respect to how you're going to aggregate. Right. The other thing, as I mentioned, also past edges clearly may have some, some, some uh, uh, impact and they are informative. And so we, so you might not also want to only consider the, the current uh, window, you also want to consider past in, uh, windows. Question is, well, how should you deal with that? Right, so in this case here, you might want to introduce this uh, decay parameter alpha saying, well, in, past, uh, in the past uh, history, this is how much I'm going to deal with it, and that's clearly a, a recursive function then. And the other thing is you might want to do is, at some point, maybe that weight just falls way, way below to, to, uh, to uh, such a low uh, weight that you just want to prune it out because uh, uh, it is going to have some computational impact on large graphs. You really do not want to have a, a, ten, a too dense a graph for, for many of the kind of things that we might want to do, like label propagation or things like that. So three parameters I, I, uh, I thought about it, and I thought these were the three parameters that, uh, that kind of made sense to me, at least thinking about uh, uh, the space of aggregating uh, this, 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 kind of, uh, this kind of data. And so once, once we have that, we can then think about what should the network look like, right? And so I, what I define is basically I have the adjacency matrix at any given time step with, the, with, with respect to the my window. I'm going, then going to say, okay, let's say, take that, and then we're going to add any uh, the, the adjacency matrix uh, from, from the prior window um, as well. Uh, and uh, that's basically going to be my adjacency metric. Uh, matrix at any given time. I'm not pruning anything here because I want to keep even low edges uh, across, uh, across time. But for the final graph I'm going to look at, I'm basically going to do the pruning down here and say, well, uh, for the graph I'm actually going to uh, look at for a particular given time step, I'm going to prune out, uh, prune out low edge, uh, low edge uh, weight uh, edges. So that's basically uh, uh, what I wanted to do. And one of the things is you can also just to, to, to just generalize and get rid of uh, uh, the time window, we can just normalize it to say, well, it's just a, a, an integer constant. You can just normalize time. So now that I know, have a sense of what the network should look like at any given time, the question then is, okay, that's good. So let's figure out what are the communities, what are the nodes, how do they, how do they interact, right? And so in this case here, I was not, 
uh, I was somewhat agnostic on, on ter in terms of well, what should the clustering algorithm look like and so on and so forth because I was really much more in, uh, interested in the table aggregation. So in this case, you just used the standard modularity clustering algorithm uh, uh, to identify my communities at any given time. Um, and so uh, you can use both weighted on, weighted edges. I used weighted edges in this case here. Uh, but uh, any results I show here, so basically uh, going to be the same whether you use weighted or unweighted. So you, you come up with that set of uh, communities. The question is, well, how do they then uh, 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 track them, right? What we want to do is we want to identify communities that are in the, in the, previous, in the previous time step as well. And so in this case here, I did not spend too much time thinking about that either because people in the literature have looked at this, and that was not really the, the, the main focus of what I wanted to look at here. So. I'm basically borrowing again here where people have uh, some heuristics people have come up with in terms of saying, is, a, uh, is this the same community as in a previous time step? So in this case, you can think a community continues if the majority of a community uh, uh, moves on. So that if the majority of the community uh, moves forward, and if in uh, uh, more than half of the current community is from a previous community, and more than two thirds of that previous community move forward, we say it continues. We can also think about what it merges and say, well, these are the two communities that kind of merged in. So now we have a community where the significant portions of two or, two or more other communities from the previous time steps are now here. We say this would be a merge step that these communities merged to go with some other community. You can think about the same thing about splitting a community splits. In this case here, it said that at least 30% of a community needed to split off and form another community. Um, and if you had two of those uh, aspects, then that community split. Otherwise, we basically just said it, it, it died at that point. So now we have uh, an idea about talking about communities that they continue, merge, split, and so on. Uh, for, for nodes, it's basically a straightforward aspect there. Once we know the community, we know whether a node is, more, uh, is leaving or staying in a community over, over time steps. Uh, and uh, in this particular aspect, if a community splits or dies, I, I basically uh, said that uh, the, the, uh, the node did something other. And for the machine learning aspect, uh, later on, I, I basically ignored that. So that's basically how I track communities and nodes. And now I wanted to get into that experimental study. So well, now that we know this, as we start to uh, think about aggregating uh, the data, how, do, how, uh, how are these things affected? And so the experimental study here is uh, 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 really I took some real data, and I varied my parameters. I looked at the communities that were formed, how, well they, how long they lived, and so on and so forth, and tried to see, well, how, how do uh, the varying parameters actually change what we see here? Right. And I also applied machine learning. Right. So the data sets I used here are relatively small. The end run data set that was already mentioned a little bit earlier. And also the World Trade Flows data, uh, uh, which basically represents how much uh, uh, countries uh, uh, traded with one another in a given year. So the, email, uh, the end run data set is basically continuous in terms of we have the emails, we have the timestamp for the emails. For the World Trade Flows data, we only have it on a per year basis, but we do have it over multiple years from 1962 through 2000. And so this is over two years uh, of data for the Enron data set. And I basically decided uh, uh, to focus on, on, uh, on the decay and pruning step. So I basically set this time window for this particular study here to just be one window. Um, just to, to, to put it on an even footing with the World Trade Flows and say, well, let's just fix the time window and look, and look at the other aspects. Okay. So varying parameters. Um, I basically had a varying parameter of the decay uh, from alpha from going 0.5 all the way up to 1. So 0.5 is I only take care, uh, I only think about, uh, 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 take half of the weight from the previous time step to carry it forward up to 1, where I take the full weight basically uh, completely ag aggregating it. Pruning steps I had because uh, of the weights on the two different networks were different, so I also had to use different pruning, and so I had different pruning steps for, 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 for each of these two as well. Right. And so, um, Without further ado, to going into some of the statistics, that, uh, so some of the things I found. So, just to, to show you how dramatic things really, really are. I mean, they are really dramatic. So, in this case here, this is World Trade Flow in 1993. So, this is after about 30 years of, uh, of, of trades. So, if I had no, if I basically set alpha to one, so I basically aggregate all the data, you have a really nice, uh, super dense network. If I set it to 0.5 and also had a relatively high eta, uh, you basically say here, that is basically completely almost all singletons with a few strong communities, but by and large, it completely degenerates uh, down to, 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 to almost nothing. Huge effect, huge impact, clearly. So, so is the, yes. are the initial things weighted by how much trade there is? Or? Yeah, so uh, I think, uh, yeah, so the edge weight here for, for the countries, I basically said, uh, I basically normalized for a particular year and say, well, what is 
what is the ratio or what is the fraction of uh, trade between people uh, between the different <coughs> countries? So that's going to be the weight. So ninety percent of my trades were with you uh, in monetary value. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I have a question. So this yes. Your thresholds on ADA. Yes. Is that the same thing as or is it somewhat similar to considering different uh, deltas for your time windows? Ah, good question. No, no. Uh, so I think. Uh, um, it's going to have a different impact. I think the, the I think the deltas and the alphas are more uh, 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 correlated than the eta's necessarily because th this is these are purely for pruning, just getting rid of low weights, right? So the alpha is basically how much decay you have. So there is clearly so if I have alpha of one, uh, um, it's basically the same as saying my time in uh, window to infinite, right? So they they are related in that sense, uh, absolutely. Um, so giving you some sense of what actually happens as well, uh, just to look at the, 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 the kind of mess that comes out. So if you look at the world trade flow, so Enron for, for alpha 0.5 and, and, and a s small eta for, for, uh, for, uh, uh, for, for the world trade flows, and I think the eta was slightly different for Enron. But still, what's, but what you see here is that every single row, this is one year or one time step. Uh, ooh, I guess I really need to, to move. One time step, but basically you can see it's a huge, uh, it's a huge mess. Uh, right, you can see very, 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 uh, 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 chaotic, where the color codes are whether you die or whether you, uh, whether you, you uh, uh, whether it's a birth or a death, whether you split or whether you merge, it's all over the place. If you move into here, you can see basically in terms of nodes <coughs> moving all over the place as well. I mean, it's, 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 it's pretty, pretty chaotic. But we can clean up by looking at just communities and look at what, what community structures look like. High alpha, you get a lot of stability. Lower alpha, things get much more chaotic. You see the same thing on the, on the, uh, on the Enron as well. High alpha, you get a lot of stability. Uh, uh, low alpha, again, things get very chaotic. The interesting thing, though, happens is that if you start looking at things like community sizes, regardless of what uh, what uh, what those parameters are, you see you see some interesting you see some interesting trends, and particularly here on the uh, uh, on the uh, this is Enron, I believe, uh, where you see some pretty consistent trends in terms of how big the communities actually are uh, if you squint just the right way. So it turns out that. Uh, some of the strong communities do seem to be uh, at least at the right size, although uh, the, 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 uh, the internals of those communities might look uh, very, very, very different. Um, also, in terms of looking at how long these communities actually last, again, what happens is that if, if, if you integrate, uh, look at an infinite time window uh, in the Enron data set, you see some, some very, very strong grouping that actually makes a lot of sense. And these basically came up from, from basically from year one and lasted throughout the whole uh, area. What happens is if you go into uh, 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 a, high, a small alpha, you see it's the same groupings, but they don't, know, don't last quite as long. You have, you have a subset of the, that group one over here, uh, of group two over here, I forgot to, to, to align them. Uh, it's a subset, but they still last for basically 38 years. Over here for group two, now it only lasts for 31 years, but still you have a lot of the core. Uh, group three only lasted 22 years, uh, only a small part of it, and all the other groups basically only lasted for one, one or two years when we came over here. A lot of other groups lasted for, 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 for a decade or more over, over there. So a huge effect, right? Same thing as you look at uh, things like centrality uh, in the world trade flow. So one of the things that if you have a very low alpha, uh, the, just the most marked and just to point it out here, the form of West Germany basically disappears and Germany comes up when, we, when the Berlin Wall fall. Now what happens over here is what happens if you have a small, uh, even a slightly uh, 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 um, uh, uh, relatively high alpha, uh, what happens is that the former West Germany hangs around for a while, right? And the uh, new Germany takes a long time to, to kind of rise. And so you have an interesting phase shift there. So now what we have is that we have the, the longevity, uh, longevity of, of communities versus looking at some of these phase shifts. And sometimes you actually need to explore multiple values of these attributes to actually get into that. Um, and I think I'm almost out of time. So, uh, so, so I'm doing okay. I think I'll, I'll still speak through this. So for the machine learning aspect, just to, to see about some of the other analytics uh, that are being impacted on this here. Uh, you can look at these uh, classification problems, either uh, for the communities or for the nodes. Did, they sp did a community s split, merge, or, or continue? Same with the node, did it leave or stay? The attributes here, I'm basically flattening it out and uh, propositionalizing it, so I'm coming up with a whole bunch of various attributes on communities and nodes in terms of uh, structural, uh, basically these all structural uh, kind of attributes because that's really all I, I care about here. Uh, basically standard machine learning uh, 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 paradigms in terms of doing various cross-validations and so on and so forth I'm not going to go into. The interesting things here is uh, uh, 
as you kind of alluded, we kind of saw in, uh, in the other graphs, as we change alpha and eta, you can basically see here in terms of, uh, for example, continuing, uh, uh, continuing uh, um, communities uh, grows as alpha grows, uh, but they also uh, decay as, we, as, as, as eta decays because we start pruning more. Same thing with the Enron. Um, what you see is really, really uh, interesting for the, for, the, uh, uh, for the nodes. You basically see at some point uh, things basically become completely degenerate at all, uh, uh, that you basically have not, not, nothing going on. There's not, uh, uh, nothing, uh, oh, these are the communities, sorry. For communities, there's like no mergers or splits over here. Uh, everything basically kind of degenerates at the, uh, at the, at the extremes. So what the effects are on, on machine learning is that um, you basically see at the extreme points things don't quite work. You see here at the, at the, at the, at the, at the high edits when you prune a lot, uh, because things become a little bit more stable, you can in fact uh, glean a little from that from a machine learning to say, well, just predict the majority class in some sense. Very strong cases again here you see here in terms of cluster evolution, uh, again here uh, 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 things did degenerate enough, so I was actually kind of surprised to see this. I was expecting something else, but again, you see here, uh, there's an interesting medium where things are uh, interesting but pretty stable enough that, uh, that uh, it actually uh, does pretty well. Um, so I think I'm all out of time, but I just wanted to leave this uh, with some of the things that I wanted to, 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 to kind of highlight. Uh, there are many ways to pre-process dynamic data. Uh, I thought of one way to, to, to kind of think about the pre-processing pre uh, framework to just think a little bit about it. Uh, depending on the parameters you choose, you're going to see different structures come out, and so you should explore, in fact, uh, uh, different, uh, different parameters, I think, to, to, to identify this. Different questions are going to be uh, exploring in terms of longe longevity of strong clusters versus these uh, phase shifts that, you, that we saw. Um, and whatever you do, I think uh, if you do actually do a, a temporal aggregation, make sure you justify why you're doing it and making sure you did the right aggregation to actually being able to answer the questions you might have about the data. So I'll leave it at that. Thanks. Thank you.